Joining us now is Carl Rowe, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff and Fox News contributor. Carl, good morning to you. I know you were listening to the president there as the G7 wraps in France. Your thoughts as, as you listened on to the president making a lot of news there. Yeah. Look, uh, big news on two issues, China and Iran. Um, uh, we've talked a little bit uh, earlier about uh, on China, the president wants a good deal, thinks that the Chinese want a good deal. I thought one of the overlooked points, and it's very important, is Macron's statements on intellectual property in the WTO. He was basically saying to the president, we, we hear that your concerns, uh, we share your concerns about the Chinese stealing intellectual property, and we are ready to work with you to make certain that they abide by international norms through the WTO. I hope the president heard that and takes him up on that because we do have a huge problem with China stealing our technology and it is better if the world says to China stop it than just have the United States do it and, and Macron today signaled that, that the uh, other leaders of the G7 were willing to stand by the president to modernize the World Trade Organization rules on intellectual property to explicitly uh, end uh, the Chinese practices. I thought that was a very important moment, uh, maybe overlooked a little bit by the focus on the Chinese. The marketers, markets are, have responded positively to the overnight news from China and to the president's news conference. The market is up about 185 points when I last looked. Of course, that's down. We, we dropped 600 points on uh, on, on Friday, but uh, we're, we're back up now about 180 points, and that's good news. But, Carl, as, as you well know, I mean, chi uh, China was admitted to the World Trade Organization with this sort of worldwide belief that they would behave themselves and they would conduct themselves like other nations in the world do, and they have not done that. So what would this, you know, new pressure from President Trump, President Macron, how would that accomplish that? Well, first of all, uh, the rules that the WTO has in place uh, were developed in the early 1990s when intellectual property and technology were not the centerpiece. The Chinese began to do their forced technology transfers in the late uh, part of the, of, the, uh, of the first decade of the century and really have gotten this thing going in the, like the last seven or eight years where they basically say you've got, if you're a U.S. company and you want to sell in uh, China, you have to have a Chinese partner. The Chinese partner has, in essence, an unlimited license to your technology. If you want to sell to the Chinese government, then you have to have the plant in China and you have to share your manufacturing processes. Now, there are not really good rules at the WTO regarding this because this is a new practice. But everybody, do you think the Germans, do you think the Brits, do you think the Italians, do you think that the French love having their technology stolen? No, it's happening to them just like it's happening to us. And it is better having gotten them in the WTO to basically say, okay, it is time for two things to happen. One is for us to modernize our rules on uh, intellectual property, which mm. is exactly what Macron said, and stop you from doing this. And second of all, to treat you, the other thing was we brought China in as a, quote, developing country. Well, they're no longer a developing country. They should no longer be given the sort of leeway that a developing country has to be more protectionist in their policies. They ought to be treated as a major economic power, just like every member of the G7 is. And again, I got the sense today from Macron he explicitly said on intellectual property, and there's a strong hint that, yeah. you know, we need, to, this is one of the two biggest economies in the world, we need to treat you as such. It's interesting, uh, Charles Payne from FBN was sitting with us when Macron said that, he, he, he thought the same thing, that's, it, that's huge to hear him say that. Just want to finish off with uh, Russia, Vladimir Putin, the comments that we just heard from President Trump on that. He was asked about inviting uh, Vladimir Putin back to the summit next year and of course the united states will be will be hosting the summit the president responded i would certainly invite him but suggested that he may not attend so certainly those comments will will be spread around yeah, the look, world uh yeah, look, uh, the, this, the, the G7 tossed, uh, the G8 tossed him out and made themselves into the G7 because he violated international norms and invaded his neighbor and stole territory. Uh, now, granted, it's a problem. I hear the president when he says, you know, we were talking about a lot of things that concerned Russia and they weren't here, and now we're going to have to talk to him outside our our, our, our club, if you will, of G7. On the other hand, I think it would be terrible for the president politically to invite them next year to uh, to particularly if it's at his club in Doral, to come to the G7 and make it the G8 again over, first of all, the opposition of his partners, and second of all, in the middle of a presidential election year. This is something, this is a controversy. The president does not need to be defending Vladimir Putin in 2000, particularly over being ejected from the G8 over, uh, over his invasion and uh, illegal usurpation of, of Crimea. It just doesn't need it in the middle of a presidential election.
All right, Carl Rove, thank you.